Well, hello everyone. Welcome to another very exciting episode. Nowhere else but here on the MI Gardener channel. Really excited for this one. It's not going to be a long episode, but I wanted to get this one out because I was really, really excited to show you all how we are drying our herbs. And I wanted to show you all how you can dry your herbs the authentic way, the the tried and true way that people have been doing it for hundreds, maybe even thousands of years. And drying herbs like this not only will give you a higher quality product, a more flavorful product, but it will also last so much longer. Plus, you can't beat the look. I mean, <laughs> you gotta admit, that looks pretty sweet. So really excited about this, and I'm gonna walk you through how to do it. You only need a couple materials, some herbs obviously, and then you just need time. One of the ways that people are always drying herbs that kind of confuses me is you're drying herbs in the oven and you're drying herbs in a dehydrator, okay? Dehydrating an and, and oven is called heat dehydrating. And it confuses me as to why people are dehydrating herbs with heat dehydrating. Now, if this method did not exist, I could see a possibility. The thing is, is that this method exists. When you use heat, what happens is that the heat will actually evaporate water, okay? That's part of the dehydration process. But with that dehydration comes the essential oils leaving. That's part of the distillation process. When you have essential oils leaving, you're basically making airborne essential oils. What you wanna do is you wanna take out the water content while retaining the essential oils. That's what adds it flavor, otherwise, your stuff's gonna taste just like cardboard. It's gonna taste like leaves. You know, there won't be any flavor to them. So the whole point of drying herbs is to hang them so they dry slowly. Speed is not of the essence here. You wanna retain the quality, and also by doing that, you're also going to retain the shape of the leaf. The shape of the leaf when dehydrated actually has a very little surface area. These sage leaves here, have very little surface area. But when you break them down and you crush them up by dehydrating them, what you're doing is you're essentially increasing the surface area that can oxidize and allow essential oils to leave the, uh, the, the plant material, whatever herb you're drying. Now this method does not work very well for things like basil. This method works very well, um, I mean it does work, it just it doesn't work very well. Basil is best used fresh. There's just certain herbs that you wanna use fresh. Parsley, basil, very um, very water rich and, um, and thin leafed uh, herbs. So all the, you'll see all the herbs here, we have oregano, we have sage, and we have thyme. The thing in common with all these herbs is they're Mediterranean herbs. These are the herbs that are best for this method, even though you can use all the herbs for this, this method here. Um, a lot of the Mediterranean herbs that you see, they are growing in a very arid climate, meaning they don't receive a lot of water. So the leaves themselves are very rich in essential oils, and the quality of them is going to be retained when using this method. So I'm gonna show you how to do it now. It's super simple, and it's gonna make you upset that you have not found about this method earlier, because it really truly is the easiest the most hassle-free method that there is. And on top of that, another note about you know easy is it's also the cheapest. Because you're using a dehydrator, which runs for 12 to 14 hours sometimes. You're using an oven, gas or electric, and you're running that for maybe two or three hours or so. And you're not able to dry this many herbs because you have to lay them flat. You can't pile them up when you're dehydrating like that. And so you need to uh, you need to just understand that this method here, while it takes longer, it's going to save you much more uh, much more money because you're not running electric or gas to dehydrate your herbs. You're just letting the air and uh, time really <laughs> time. No pun intended. All right, let's go. So these are the herbs that we're going to be drying today. We have rosemary and thyme. Now again, these are a great example of some herbs that you can air dry. The next thing you're going to need is some, uh, this is some butcher's string. You can get this at any grocery store. They have this, uh, they use this to tie up meat um, when, they, when they kind of butterfly it together and close it up. Um, you know, when you're doing like, uh, like tenderloins or stuffed, you know, stuffed chicken breast, you'll tie it back up with this. 
and this is an organic string, so this is coming in contact with food. You can go with a craft, they have craft string as well. I just prefer to have um, food grade products coming in contact with my food. So um, you can use craft products as well, don't worry. I'm sure it'll probably still work uh, without much concern, um, but we had this on hand, so that's what we're using. And then also you're gonna need some scissors to cut the string and some tape to tape the string to the wall if you want it to look like mine. Um, you can hang it, you can tie it. The one thing I will say is make sure where you do tie it, it's not receiving a lot of sun. So, all right, that's all simple. It's really as simple as just measuring out how much string you want. I typically go, I typically go with, you know, uh, about maybe 12 to 18 inches or so. You do need enough to, you need enough to wrap around the bunch. So you're gonna just grab it at one point. I find it's really easy to set the string down, set the bunch on top of the string, bring the string over, and then tie it. And that way you're keeping the, the bunch together because it, once it starts falling apart on you, it gets to be kind of a tangled up mess. So just tie it like that. And then another knot on top of that and you should be good to go. So I'm gonna I'm gonna break up the the rosemary into two separate bunches here, just because I don't I don't uh, like massive bundles of of rosemary all at once. Um, I like to kind of make them smaller bundles because uh, the leaves are so close together that they're kind of hard to access when they're dried. What you do is you typically hold it over the top of your cooking and you just kind of squeeze it, and the 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 leaves will naturally fall. Or you can drop them onto a cutting board and then um, then mince them up further from there if you want to do so. And there you go. It is really that simple. In about two to three weeks time, these will be totally dry and you can tell they're dry when they're brittle and crispy. These will stay fresh for, goodness, six, seven months. Um, I mean, they probably won't last that long, but they'll stay fresh for six, seven months, and then we'll have them again next year, fresh, right from the garden that we can use fresh, and then when winter comes next year, we'll just do the whole process over again. It's a great way to save a ton of money because herbs are so expensive in the store, and it's a great way that you can cut your costs, um, eat healthier, eat fresher, and still enjoy the, uh, the freshness of the main growing season, even when it's winter outside. So I hope you all enjoyed. Hopefully you learned something new. And as always, this is Luke from the Emily Gardner channel reminding you to grow big or go home. And we'll catch y'all later. See ya.